So the first, the US state of Alabama is looking into a discredited pro-democratic party operation and whether or not it illegally impacted on the Senate race there back in 2017. The operation apparently involved more than a thousand fake Russian language Twitter accounts designed to appear as if they were backing a Republican rival. The information is concerning. The impact it had on the election is something that's significant for us to explore and we'll go from there. Those behind the Alabama scheme were meant to be tracking fake Russian accounts, but next, as Caleb Mopin reports tonight, they, in fact, created their own. Some of the activity pointed to as alleged Russian meddling in the United States uh, was actually being carried out by the cybersecurity forum New Knowledge, that this New Knowledge outfit was carrying out activity designed to look like Russian meddling in order to hurt Roy Moore, the Republican candidate. Democrat Jones, who won the race against Roy Moore, uh, he has come forward and said he supports a federal investigation into these new revelations. I'd like to see the Federal Election Commission and the Justice Department look at this to see if there were any laws being violated, and if there were, prosecute those responsible. LinkedIn's co-founder, Reid Hoffman, has come forward and actually apologized to the Republican candidate, Roy Moore, for the fact that he contributed money to an outfit that apparently worked to discredit Roy Moore during the election. Hoffman contributed $750,000 to American Engagement Technologies, of which $100,000 went to a cybersecurity firm known as New Knowledge. And now, New Knowledge, during the election, created over 1,000 Russian-language accounts on Twitter and then had those accounts follow Roy Moore. Um, this created then the impression that Roy Moore was getting Russian support. It's no surprise that Trump is supporting Moore. They both have a deep love of country. The country's Russia, but still. It's pretty alarming when a guy slips into fluent Russian. Moore speaks fluent Russian, and like, there's <laughs> Russians everywhere a year later. It's moving closer into the Oval Office. New knowledge is tied to Hamilton 68, which is a website that apparently uh, purports to be tracking the activity of Russian bots and trolls on the Internet. And apparently new knowledge, this entity, is tied with Hamilton 68, which is widely quoted in U.S. mainstream media, The New York Times, The Washington Post, CNN, and other outfits turn to Hamilton 68, which works with new knowledge in order to report on the activity of Russian trolls and bots. apparently has not chosen to run with this story. The revelations were, were revealed, they came out, they became public on December 19th. Uh, but it was only on December 27th that CNN chose to report on this, this information. And they only did so after there had been some outcry. The Daily Caller and others had written articles about CNN's ignoring of this story. And their reporting on it was very short. Now, we've reached out to CNN to see why they haven't jumped on this story. And we are waiting for a response. Now, at this point, uh, the 2017 Senate scheme just surfaced last week. Uh, so we're waiting to see what else will surface. American journalist Dave Lindorf believes this covert bot operation reflected broader problems in the U.S. electoral system, too. Dirty tricks are not illegal. They're, um, you know, they're part of our, our corrupt electoral system. You can, you can lie, um, you can make up stories, you can libel people. All of these things are, are allowed in US, the U.S. electoral system, and then what what compounds it and makes it so corrupting is the vast amount of money that can be poured into these campaigns that allows them to pay for this kind of corruption. And then on top of that, we have a, a population that's uh, really not capable of critical thought. And so people will buy into the stupidest uh, claims about candidates.